Hi students, in today's session I am going to start NEET preparation series day 6. It covers previous year NEET and APMT questions from Thermodynamics and Thermochemistry chapter. Let us see the first question from 2018. The bond dissociation energies of X2, Y2 and XY is given in the ratio of 1 half 1 ratio. Then Delta H for the formation of XY is given minus 200 kilojoule per mole. The bond dissociation energy of X2 will be. See here. X2 plus Y2 gives rise to XY. So X2 plus Y2 how many moles we get? 2XY. Clear. In this question what they given the bond dissociation enthalpies of X2 is let us say 1 is given or let us take A and 0.5 is half right half A this will be half A or A by 2 half and this will form how much students XY no XY is A. Why I am taking A? Because 1 is given. Let us take it as for example A. That is the amount of energy required to break XY bond. Like that how many moles are there? 2 moles are there. So 2A I am taking. As per the question they are asking bond dissociation energy of X2. Let us find how. How we can do that. Delta H is equal to bond dissociation energies of reactant minus bond dissociation energy of product is a formula clear how to calculate bond dissociation energy of reactants here i already wrote a is an x2 value and bond dissociation energy of y2 is how much students a by 2 minus Bond dissociation energy of XY is given 1 ratio. Let us we are taking as A for 1 mole. For 2 moles I am taking 2A right 2A. This on solving what we get A plus A by 2 minus 2A. Then it will be A and A minus 2A is minus A. A by 2 minus A. The, this will be minus A by 2. And delta H is given. How much? Uh, energy is released during the formation of 1 mole of XY minus 200 joule. This is minus. Minus 200 kilojoule is energy is released for 1 mole. 1 mole of XY formation minus 200 kilojoule is released. Then 2 moles formation how much is released. You can do everything for 1 mole also. 2 moles how much? 2 into minus 200 minus 400. So, take delta H value how much? Minus 400. So, minus 400 is equal to how much? Minus minus gets cancelled. 400 equal to A by 2. Then A equal to 800 kilojoule per mole. This is the amount of energy required to break which bond? XX bond. Is a clear students? What we took? X is to Y is to xy ratio this is given based on this we we wrote a standard expression by using delta h for formation of xy this energy we took for two moles based on the standard equation if you want to take for only one mole then you can take half half of these values you take here then you will get the uh, what to say bond dissociation energy of x2 that is also another way let us see next question so, correct answer is third option. For a given reaction, delta H is given 35.5 kilojoule per mole and delta S is given. The reaction is spontaneous at which temperature? Whether greater than 425 or greater than 298 or less than 425 is the question. Clear? The formula for this is delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S. What is the condition for a reaction to be spontaneous? Delta G should be negative. Delta G should be negative means it should be less than 0. So you can write that delta H minus T delta S value should be less than 0 because which is equal to 0 and its value is negative less than 0. So I am writing like this. Then from this if you move minus T delta S this side then we get delta H is less than T delta S. Clear? Move this delta S toward this side. Why we are doing like this? To get our relation delta H by delta S is less than T. What is delta H is given student? 35.5 and delta S is given 
83.6 if you substitute directly and you do you will get wrong answer why because in your exam hurry that day if you do so you should not do like that because here it is given in kilojoule here is given in joule maximum they give like this only you have to convert into joules so 1 kilojoule equal to 10 power of 3 joules do this then you will get around the value 425 around value will get so which means that t is greater than 425 425 this value is less than t means t temperature should be greater than 425 then only the reaction is possible to save the time uh, i am not doing the calculation because many are telling no need to do calculation ma'am write it next question is a gas is allowed to expand in a well insulated container against a constant external pressure whenever constant external pressure is there then you can you can directly say that that is an irreversible process during irreversible process work done calculation what is the formula w equal to minus p external P delta V. Delta V is nothing but what students? V2 minus V1. Clear? This is the best trick you have to identify when during a question. Whether to use uh, 2.303 RT log of V2 by V1 formula or this formula. No confusion. Whenever external constant external pressure is there, you, you can use this formula. And here pressure is how much given? 2.5 and initial from it is an expanding from which volume initially 2.5 liters and final volume is 4.5 so minus 2.5 final minus initial what is the final volume 4.5 minus initial volume is 2.5 this is a change in the volume when you are changing the, when you kept a kept a, a constant external pressure the change in internal energy you have to calculate clear in what they're asking they're asking in joules by using this you have to calculate change in internal energy so w is equal to minus p delta v then minus 2.5 into 2 you will get how much you will get minus 5 units is volume liter and pressure atmosphere you have to convert this into joules 1 liter atmosphere is equal to 101.325 joule you can do by using 101 also directly clear then what you will get is what you get is substitute there then minus minus 5 5 into 101.325 you will get minus 506.625 if you use directly 101 you will get your answer minus 505 which is given in the 2017 question they gave minus 505 for your understanding i i wrote this option over here so this is the correct answer next question for a sample of a perfect gas, when its pressure is changed isothermally from P initial to P final, the entropy change is given by. They are asking that you have to find the entropy change during this, during this process. But actually this is a direct formula. But no need to remember these formulas. If you know the main uh, formula then you can do different expressions like for isothermal as well as for uh, uh, isochoric or adiabatic process you can do it now i will tell you how to do this numerical clear delta s is equal to n c v ln of t2 by t1 plus n r ln of v2 by v1 this is the main formula you have to keep in your mind is a clear students delta s is equal to n c v ln of t2 by t1 plus n r ln of v2 by v1 here the condition is isothermal means temperature is constant throughout the process t1 and t2 are same initial and final is same whenever these two are same this term becomes zero then delta s is equal to n r ln of v2 by v1 at constant temperature you know that according to Boyle's law pv is equal to constant or p is inversely proportional to v right at constant temperature then from this you can write that 
v2 by v1 equal to what you can write students p1 by p2 both are inversely related if you substitute over here you will get n r ln of p1 by p2 what is p1 initial pressure and what is p2 final pressure so this is your answer understood or if they are giving instead of isothermal process if they are giving that isochoric process then how to solve this isochoric process volume is constant during the process then v2 by v, this term becomes zero and you will get your answer n c v ln of t2 by t1 if volume is constant then what happens pressure is directly proportional to temperature so t2 by t1 you can write it as p2 by p1 so n c v ln of p2 by p1 also be the correct answer in these two options any one they may give like this a different conditions you can solve if you know this main expression clear students next question the correct thermodynamic conditions for the spontaneous reactions at all the temperatures is so you have to find the which of the following expressions are correct clear now i'll tell you a small trick delta g equal to delta h minus t delta s is the formula what is the formula delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s is the formula for, for a reaction to be spontaneous delta g should be negative clear i'll give you in tricky box keep this box just uh, practice this box next time onwards you won't miss the question from this topic let us take first column for delta h next for delta s next for temperature next is whether reaction is spontaneous or non spontaneous and what when you can say when you get delta g negative then only you can say whether it is spontaneous or non spontaneous for example take alternatively this value negative positive if this value positive negative or what happens if both are positives or both are negatives like this if delta listen carefully delta h is negative this term is negative and delta s is positive what happens positive into negative 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 of negative minus of minus you will get the value in negative only so if delta g value comes in negative then the reaction is which reaction spontaneous reaction clear, clear students understood next one delta h is positive this value is positive and this value is negative if you multiply negative into negative then what you will get this term becomes positive this term also positive so both are positives means you will get delta g positive at any condition of temperature any temperature this is the best 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 box any temperature then what you will get delta g positive means the reaction is which reaction non spontaneous reaction and if delta h is positive and delta s also positive delta s is positive for example see delta s is positive and delta h also positive positive into negative negative so this term will become negative and this term is positive two are there then how you should know if temperature value is low temperature is low this this term becomes less and this value will be more when the, because temperature value is less then delta h is positive this value is positive means you will get delta g positive if it is positive the reaction is non spontaneous if temperature is very high if temperature is high then what happens students tell me here delta s is positive na uh, temperature is more then negative into positive negative this term will be more negative and high temperature high temperature you will get delta g negative then the reaction is spontaneous same way do for this also what you get if delta s is negative uh, delta h is negative this term is negative and this term also negative 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 positive right so this will become positive this will become negative then what you have to see you should see that if 
temperature is low this term will be low and delta g will be negative at low temperature delta g is negative so it will be spontaneous then if temperature is high this term will be more and it will get positive value delta g then it will be non spontaneous this box makes you to solve maximum the questions from this topic uh, so to make the reaction spontaneous delta h should be what at any temperature means these two conditions delta h should be less than 0 positive uh, sorry negative delta s is should be positive so it should be greater than 0 delta h is less than 0 and delta s is greater than 0 this is your answer and next questions question number 6 Clashes Clapeyron equation. This is a direct equation. Consider the following liquid vapor equilibrium. They are asking which of the following is correct. This is a Clashes Clapeyron equation. For example, in your exam, you don't know this kind of question. Better to leave this if you don't know the formula. Because simply if you try hit and trial method, uh, you will lose the marks. And next questions I will give you. Try these questions. Question number 7. Question number 8, question number 9, question number 10 and 11. I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.